away from the NFL draft. I'm Chris Hassel, and we still have lots of uncertainty about how things are going to unfold, especially around the quarterback position. The over-under for quarterbacks taken in round one is three. But for the first time in nearly a decade, no quarterback is expected to go top five. There are four, maybe five quarterbacks who could hear their names called potentially in round one, but it's believed that the Panthers at number six overall would be the first to potentially take a quarterback. The first quarterback off the board expected to be this guy, Malik Willis. Kenny Pickett will likely go in round one. Matt Corral is a possibility. The big question marks are Desmond Ritter and Sam Howell. And here's how we rank them at CBSSports.com. And take a look at the overall rank. That, that's the reason why a lot of our experts are saying that if you're going to draft a quarterback high, you are going to be reaching and you are going to be hoping. Desmond Ritter uh, grades out right now overall as close to a third round pick, but potentially a first rounder because it is a quarterback league as we know. And that's why we bring in one of our quarterbacks. Danny Cannell is here to give us some comps on these quarterbacks. Before we jump into that, uh, 2013 uh, was the last time we didn't have a quarterback taken top five. That was the EJ Manuel draft class. Is this the worst quarterback class since then? Easily. Uh, and maybe going back to 96, which was my year when there was not a quarterback taken huh. in the first round. Tony Banks in the second round was the first one taken. It's just not a great class. And I think the NFL teams have kind of showed you this by the quarterback movement that we've seen out there with teams making moves like Denver going for Russell Wilson, Washington going for Carson Wentz, Baker Mayfield I think might get moved before the draft too. I think that's an indictment on this class. No one wants to take any of these quarterbacks in the top 10. And Carolina it almost feels like they might have to, but even them, I don't know how they're sold on whatever guy they've got as their top option. The one quarterback that continues to appear in the top 10 of our mock drafts from all of our experts, I don't know how you got out of mock drafts, but there's probably one coming for you down the road, <laughs> is Malik Willis yeah. out, out of Liberty because of the ceiling. Who would you compare him to? So I think a lot of the criticisms are the same and a lot of the upside potential are the same of Josh Allen when he was coming out of Wyoming. That's a pretty good comp. It's a great comp. Now it's a mini Josh Allen because Josh Allen is a physical specimen that scouts we're salivating over because he's 6'5". Malik Willis, a little bit smaller at 6'1". But the skill set's very similar. Big arm talent, can run, athletic, and a lot of the downside risks are very similar too. When Josh Allen was at Wyoming, he was trying to do too much. He didn't have NFL talent around him, so he looked inaccurate on tape. Much of what we've seen from Malik Willis throughout his time uh, at Liberty, and especially this season. Two years ago, he had a phenomenal season. But when you look at the off-arm off angle throws, when you look at the improvisational skills, I see a lot of similarities. And I think that's why Malik Willis is going to go the, as the first quarterback taken in this draft is because of the upside that there. There is significant risk, just like there was with Josh Allen. And just like Malik Willis, there could be an MVP, MVP candidate down the road as well. Wow. Okay. Well, I mean, if he's if he's even half of what Josh Allen becomes, yeah. then, then this draft class is going to be looked at a lot differently than we think going in. Danny Cannell saying this might be the worst in a generation, back to 1996. How about a comp for Kenny Pickett, who's also expected to go in round one? So I like Kenny Pickett a lot. In fact, I had him number one uh, about you know two months ago. And then watching Malik Willis and talking about the upside, I put him at number two. But I think he's the safest bet in this class. The only problem is the upside I don't think is there for an MVP caliber type of NFL career much like Andy Dalton. Now, before anybody gets all up in arms, says, oh, well, that's not a good comp. That doesn't mean he's going to be any good. I will remind you, Andy Dalton has played 10 years in the NFL. Andy Dalton made it to the playoffs four times, and I get his record 0-4, but I, he's a really, really good NFL quarterback. Not great, and I think that's what you can get with Andy Dalton. Now, I don't think there's much risk of a guy who's out in the league in three years, but I think you look at somebody who's got a great football IQ, who's played an NFL system, who can come in and be ready to start very early and contribute. I just think he's going to be more of the leader, intangible, not going to blow you away with his arm and his physical tools, but he can still go out there and win a lot of football games for you. Over under draft position for Kenny Pickett, 10 and a half. Over under for Malik Willis, nine and a half. So those two guys are kind of the two that we could see going top 10 potentially in this draft. And now to the big question marks, including Matt Corral, a guy who we had Jonathan Jones on uh, earlier in the day. He had a mock draft. There was no Matt Corral in that first round mock draft. Who would be his comp? 
So he's a little bit of a tricky one, but when I went and watched the tape, Chris, I kept seeing a player in my mind that really reminded me of him when he was coming out, and that was Baker Mayfield. It was taken number one overall when he came out of Oklahoma, and a lot of tape that you watched at Oklahoma was similar, where he's playing in this very similar system, RPO-heavy system, throwing it all over the yard. He's able to run around and make a lot of plays, just like Baker Mayfield was at Oklahoma. The issue with it, and much like Baker Mayfield, is that athleticism that Matt Corral has, it's really impressive. But when you get to the NFL, you have to be more than an athlete the way he runs the football. Just like Baker has proven, he's not exactly running away from defenders in the NFL. But he's got a live arm. He can make plays. I think the players gravitate toward him. He's got a little bit of a cop cockiness to him, which is okay as long as you win, as Baker Mayfield's finding out. But I think the physical tools are very similar, too. The size, the stature, the arm talent, athleticism, all of it reminds me of Baker Mayfield. Okay, moving on to a, a comp that might raise some eyebrows here. Sam Howell out of North Carolina. And the comp you're about to give, yep. I, I think, is, uh, is, is going to raise some eyebrows, like I said. And I'll say this. I, I don't get a lot of things right, but when Russell Wilson came out of Wisconsin, I said that the Seattle Seahawks got an absolute steal in the third round. And I think a team is going to get a steal with Sam Howell as well. Again, another player. You have to go back and remember where Russell Wilson was when he was coming out. There weren't a lot of people talking about him, but he had thrown a lot of footballs in his career at NC State and then at Wisconsin. And he impacted teams in a positive way wherever he was, much like Sam Howe, what he did for North Carolina. When Mac Brown took over that job, he stole Sam Howe from Florida State. And he started as a true freshman. And he played above his age and wisdom. And I think he's got a similar kind of Pied Piper mentality where, hey, everyone wants to play with me. I'm a playmaker. Very natural throw of the football. I think he's underrated. And I think much like Russell Wilson, when he was coming out, people were blown away with Sam Howe's intangibles, the interview process, football acumen. And I think that's where the similar similarities fall. Do I think he's going to be a Hall of Fame player like Russell Wilson? That remains to be seen. A lot of that remains uh, depends on where he goes, what franchise. But a lot of similarities between these two coming out in college. Annie, you said this could be the worst draft class since 96, but yep. you've got Sam Howell uh, comp Russell Wilson, and you've yep. got Malik Willis comp with a mini Josh Allen. I feel like – These are best-case scenarios. We didn't okay, go with you're the going worst feeling. Yeah, I'm right. an optimistic guy. I'm a okay. glass half full type guy. I didn't want okay. to tell you that he's out there going to be Josh Dobbs. All right. So okay. We're, all right, okay. Good. Who, who's okay. the Danny Cannell of this draft class? Uh, that is easily Carson Strong out of Nevada. Okay. You know, big, strong arm guy. No. Doesn't move a lick in the pocket, uh -huh. but he's he's a good locker room guy. Can be good in the quarterback room as a backup. Can hold the clipboard like a champ. Uh -huh. That's the Danny Cannell okay, of this that's draft you. class. All right. Desmond Ritter is our last comp here. Who would you compare him? To? Well, I just wanted to spark some conversation to this one, and this is goes with. Without saying it's without all of the political dissertation that goes when anytime you mention Colin Kaepernick's name but I do see a very similar player he's a player that's tall athletic but doesn't quite play like his size and stature you would think he would and that was a lot very similar with Colin Kaepernick when he was coming out one of the reasons he wasn't a first round pick but I think you see a guy a little bit more mechanical with his motion much like Colin Kaepernick but he is athletic enough to make plays with his legs. If he gets in the right system, just like Colin Kaepernick when he played in Greg Roman's system in San Francisco, you can open up things and you can put a lot of pressure on defenses with him. And I do love Desmond Ritter's record coming out of Cincinnati. He's won over 40 games. He's only lost four. He elevated that program, much like Kaepernick did with Nevada when he was coming out. I think this is a player, again, Sam Howell and Desmond Ritter are going to get drafted lower, but I like where they're going to get drafted because I think that's where their value dictates they should be. The other quarterbacks, there's going to be a reach. These guys are going to fall where there's some value. Where do you think uh, we land as far as the number of quarterbacks in the first round? The over-under is three. Yeah, I hate the three because I think it's going to be right there. I'll take the under just because I'm sticking to my gun saying this class isn't very good. But ultimately, I think three is the number. And I think it's probably late in the first round. Somebody trades up, so they get that value of the rookie mm -hmm. contract. But I do not envision a scenario where there's four. Yeah, you could also have the Detroit Lions, who have the last pick in the first round, with their second pick in yep. the first round, taking a quarterback as well and having that number either, or either hit or maybe uh, go over the three. That's Danny Cannell. He's got some comps for us for the top quarterbacks in the NFL draft. Mini Josh Allen from Malik Willis. Andy Dalton, which uh, Danny says is not a slight. Andy Dalton, this isn't like today's Andy Dalton. This is like the Andy Dalton 
early days in Cincinnati. Prime Andy Dalton. Yeah, when he was leading them to the playoffs. Not yeah. winning in the playoffs, but getting them there. Matt Corral compared to Baker Mayfield. Sam Howell, uh, a Russell Wilson. Best case scenario, he says. He's not putting Sam Howell in the Hall of Fame yet. And Desmond Ritter says he's like a con- Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.